Welcome to this, the fourth video on academic referencing. My name's Andy Wicks and in this video I'm going to be looking at how you use citations in Word. So let's get started. The first thing you'll need to do is to download an add-in for Word called Dogear for Word. You can do that by going to this address. You'll also find it in the description of this video. Install it onto your computer and then load up Word to make sure it's installed correctly and to make sure everything's working fine. Now let's go on. You type in the text that you want. For example, you're going to start a coursework for Comp 9999. And the text is, a really good work to learn about the reverse engineering of a website is by Boulderef, whilst Blyton is not. So how do you go about adding references to something like this? Well, the first thing you need to do is to set everything up. Select the file that you want to use that has the .bibs in that you need for this particular coursework. Again, you can refer back to previous videos if you need to see how to do this. So you click on the References tab. You then go to Settings over on the right there. Then you fill in the pieces that you need. You select the file you want. Let me show you that happening. I go to References, Settings, and then I have to select the file I want. So I go to Select File and click on the one that I need. It's now all set up. I, so I hit Save and we can get going again. So, how do you go about adding a reference? Well, you click where you want the reference to appear. And then in the References tab, you click Add Reference and select the source you want. So again, let me show you that actually happening. Here I want to add a reference to the Boulderef article. So I click where I want the reference to go. I click Add Reference, check the Boulderef article, and click the Add Reference button. I can do exactly the same with the Blyton article. I click where I want it to go, click on Add Reference, check Blyton, and click on the Add Reference button again. I now have the references in there cited correctly. I didn't have to type anything in. It's all done in exactly the correct format. Finally, we want to add a References section. So make sure you have a blank line after your text. And then in the References tab, select Insert Bibliography. And what you'll get is something like this. Again, I'll show you that happening. Here I'm going to insert a blank line. I'm going to have references. And because I'm that way inclined, I shall make it bold and underlined. And now I click where I want the references to go. And in the References tab, I click Insert Bibliography. And it changes it all for me. Everything goes in in exactly the right format. The references are in surname alphabetical order of lead author. Everything is cited in the correct format. But there's one more little trick. Let me show you. You see we have our citations and we have our references all exactly as they're supposed to be. But what happens if one of your lecturers decides they want a different referencing style. Instead of using Harvard, they want you to use IEEE. Well, what would happen in most cases is you'd have to retype it all, and that is a right pain. A far better system is by using dog ear and just selecting the references style that you want. There's a tab at the top there. You click on the format that you want to use, and everything is changed automatically. No having to retype anything. 
I know of seasoned academics who have to retype all their references when they try and send their articles to different types of magazines. Don't fall into that trap. Just get used to using a tool like Dog Ear for Word that allows you to change the styles quickly and easily. I'll show you that happening. Here we are back in our document. I'm going to change the style by clicking on the referencing list. I'm choosing IEEE and as you can see it changes the references automatically. No having to retype anything. So now for a few tips. Create a BibTeX and a literature repository directory and make sure you keep copies in the cloud, somewhere like Google Docs for example. Save all your BibTeX files to the cloud. Create a directory for each course and copy the BibTeX you intend to use into that BibTeX directory. That way you'll have everything you need all in one place. And finally, create a .bib file for each course that you take so that when you create the coursework you've got all your references in one easy to use place. Things are simple. You've survived. <laughs>